I'm Ken Gameron, the Vice Chair of the Board of Finance, and it's my pleasure to call this meeting to order. This is the second of two workshops to determine the shape of the budget that we're submitting to the public on April 10th. The, uh, a word first about who's here and who's not here. The uh, Board of Education is holding a meeting and the superintendent and the chair of the Board of Education are at their meeting. Uh, the assistant uh, superintendent, Mr. Bowden, is here representing the Board of Education along with Linda Trudeau and a couple of members of the board, Ted Sands, and is there another? Another one beside Ted Sands? Okay, Ted Sands as a representative. So they are well, well represented here. The first selectman is here, uh, Matt Hoy, and uh, the, uh, let me see how many selectmen I can pick up. I, I see uh, Lou Federici, and I see Charlie Havrida, and I see the finance director as well. And Sue Renner. I think that's the cast of characters, and there's one character missing, and that's Mike Ailes, who is in Texas uh, on family business, and uh, uh, we've been in active communication, and he has deputized me to present his thoughts at the end of the meeting. So let me begin with a little bit of history. Not only was I, was I an old history teacher, but I know the history of our town for at least 25 years that I've been active. Uh, I can say that the Board of Finance uh, has listened to rather diligently to the presentations, and we've had a number of them from the Board of Education or from the Board of Selectmen, and we appreciate those. And I think we can say with, with all candor that we have gotten responsible budgets submitted to us by both the town and the schools. Uh, they could not have been more forthcoming in their uh, uh, modesty and what they uh, are, are presenting to us for consideration and uh, in their uh, wisdom in what can be presented and yet preserve the best of what we have in our town. This board has been involved in the crafting of these budgets since uh, the mid-fall. And the first formal uh, involvement we had was with the ongoing subcommittees with the Board of Education and the Board of Finance, which began in December, carried right through to January. Uh, we were then invited as active participants uh, in the two uh, uh, town workshops that fashioned the, the town budget, and those were long day, all day affairs for two days. And we had the opportunity to hear the presentations of each of the board, uh, board representatives, leaders in most cases, going from police and fire and engineering all the way through to human services, social services, and, uh, and the others. Uh, we have had an opportunity to review these budgets, and as recently as the first workshop, which was last Thursday evening, we had the benefit of one final cogent presentation by both boards to us for our consideration. And this is the time, not that we are excluding either board from, t from participating in this meeting, but we would hope you sit back, let us make our presentations, and give us the benefit of your wisdom before we vote. But we will tonight. I think our goal is to take a vote on this budget. We also have to uh, consider, as a board, the bonding resolutions. We do not formally have those bonding resolutions in hand but we can say that we have a summary sheet from the Board of Education on its request for $3,690,927 uh, for basically HVAC upgrades at Melissa Jones and more significantly at Baldwin. Uh, and uh, a small amount in there, if you can call $210,000 a small amount for future projects uh, so that there is a bonding resolution that we will be that will be submitted to us and that we will be voting on uh, on uh, uh, our meeting, which is uh, coming up rather soon. It'll be next Monday, and that's when we will uh, be able to formally authorize that. But I would like to get a sense before the meeting ends today from our board as to what you folks think of the 
bonding proposal in, its, in general, so that we've got that on, on the record. This has, uh, just to summarize where we are right now, the Board of Education is asking for a budget of $59,740,000, uh, an increase of $1,097,000 over the previous year, uh, but a, a good solid effort to keep it under 2%. You should note that the cost of living that we're dealing with nationally is about 2.1%. It's probably a bit higher in Connecticut, but nationally it's 2.1%. The Board of Selectmen came in with a budget of $29,710,000 roughly, or a, an increase of $1,058,000, or a, an increase of 3.69%. Now that's fueled because if you look at the town side, it's fueled by paying our portion of the debt service, uh, which uh, boosts that up by 7.84% 7, 7 on debt service is due this year. And uh, that's about $8.5 million. Leading to uh, what we have submitted to us when the education, selectmen, and debt service comes to a budget increase of 2.1%. That's for our review right now. We should acknowledge that there is a difficult environment that we're all living through. We've had a cut in state aid that is approximating uh, uh, $1 million. That's significant for us. A drop in the grand list from $3.72 billion to $2.9 billion. Uh, mill rate increase, which uh, we all know about and are all scratching our heads over and trying to work out, but the uh, mill rate has dropped has increased from uh, 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 29.36 to, uh, th I believe, uh, 3.7, am I correct? Uh, th 31. Excuse me. 29.36 is the current. 29.36, and it's gone up 3.72%. 3.72. So uh, that's that number. Does anyone have that number right in front of them? It's well, gone up by 2.11. It's up to 31.47. 31.47. I left off it. Yep, up 2.11. It's up 2.11. That's, that's it. I just wanted to make sure all of this is correct. It, we should also note that the major factors uh, driving these budgets are over 80% in salaries and benefits. And that gives either, that's what makes this conversation or this presentation so much more difficult is that you're only dealing with under 20% of discretionary monies that can be used to finance the programs, finance the basic business of the town and the schools. Uh, I thought it right to uh, present something to the board and then throw it out to you all. Uh, I don't want to leave my feelings as a mystery to anybody, and uh, I think recognizing the cost of living and recognizing the pressures everybody is under, that uh, we are looking here as, I, I would like us to look as a board, and I have reviewed this with uh, Mike Ailes as well, at a $500,000 cut. A cut to be shared equally by the Board of Education and the Board of uh, Selectmen. That's a heft, hefty cut, but we feel that it is manageable. Uh, I would point out that the budget last year was 1.88%. It didn't include the hefty uh, debt service. But if we look over the last five years, if you'd like for your own reference, we're asking for 2.9%, 2.91% now as a cumulative. Uh, and last year, we asked for 188. The year before 301, the year before 306, the year before 309. So we're fairly stable, but uh, we're having uh, harder times that we we need to deal with. So I have I wanted to throw that out on the board uh, to as a at least a number for us to consider. And I'd like to turn to Veronica first to ask her what your thoughts are. You've been on both boards. You've been involved in the town longer than I have. Thank you. Sorry, um, but you're far younger than I am. <laughs> um, as, as Ken Alid alluded to, we've been um, working these budgets since November. 
Um, and there was a member of the public that came before our hearing last Thursday and um, essentially asked this board to look behind the numbers, to dig deep. And I just want to comment that I would like the public to know that we've been working these budgets very hard since November, and we are looking behind the numbers. And we've done our due diligence, and we've looked to see what's driving them. Um, I think the budgets are outstanding. I, I wish um, our times were different. Um, I think the Board of Education's budget keeps within their mission. I think it moves the, the education of Guilford's children forward. Um, the same with the town's budget. It, it uh, keeps with the mission of public safety and our infrastructure and our, our um, keeping Guilford safe, just the quality of life that we have here. So all in all, I think the budget is fair. I just feel that at this time, it's not quite affordable. And there are a lot of Guilford residents that are feeling the pinch of an unsure uh, state government. Um, we don't know, we aren't quite sure what the declining state aid is going to be. It's like this big crystal ball that we're all supposed to know. Uh, we've seen our grand list come down um, and, our, and, and we're paying our, our bills. So as much as I was a part of a conversation that when I was on the board of selectmen where we talked about um, not kicking the can down the road because, you know, it comes back to bite us. I think this year, for a little bit, we have to kick the can down the road. And uh, unfortunately, I have to agree that I think uh, a $500,000 cut is probably appropriate. That would put us more in line with the cost of living, uh, which I happen to think in the Northeast is a little bit higher than nationwide. Um, so I think 2.38 is, is something that, while not perfect, is certainly something that is appropriate. May we hear from the folks on this side of the aisle? Would you like to start, Jeff? Sure. I, I also um, want to commend the Board of Education, the Board of Selectmen, <clears throat> and the town department heads on their proposed budgets. <clears throat> um, I agree that I th uh, while they are, there's very little in the way of um, uh, fat uh, that, that there would be room to make additional cuts. And I agree with the, the proposal of the 500,000 uh, to be divided evenly between the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. I think reducing that brings the increase down slightly, more in line with the um, national inflation rate. I think it's also important to note that the debt service is increasing by about $617,000, almost $618,000. Um, and if you, that's, that's non-negotiable. We have to pay that. So that increase is coming out, uh, or is, is part of the budget regardless of what, what we decide. Um, if you take that increase in the debt service out of the budget, which I know we can't do, but if you were to look at strictly operating uh, expenses, the amount to be raised by taxes drops to a little under 2%, which is below the annual rate of inflation. And I think more accurately reflects the increase in the town's operating and capital budgets. Obviously, we have to include the debt service, so that drives the total tax increase up. Uh, but when looking at ways that we can cut spending, it's the operating and the capital budgets that present the areas where we'd be able to reduce uh, town spending. It's also important to keep in mind what that one, what that increase anticipates, and that's the hiring of new firefighters to better serve the residents of North Guilford and a new, and a new police officer um, to improve the services for all of Guilford citizens. <clears throat> so having, and it also includes a 10.51% increase in the actuary recommendation for a pension contribution and negotiated employee of benefits. Negotiated employee benefits are also non-negotiable in terms of what we can do to reduce the amount of the budget. And so for those reasons, I support adopting a budget of 
$6,633 to be raised by revenue from, from the town taxes. I also think it's important to note that while, it's, that while the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education need to run their departments as efficiently as possible, I think they do that. Uh, but it's also important to remember that the services the town provides do not translate easily to those that apply to corporate America and the private sector. Specifically, as the events of the past few months have instructed us, when a sudden or unexpected event occurs, the men and women employed by the town are expected to act quickly, diligently, and professionally to address the needs of Guilford's residents. And while it's, attempt, while it's tempting to expect the town to be run as a business, it is important to remember that the town services must be provided 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, while also being prepared to address unforeseen events, while at the same time continuing to perform their regular duties uninterrupted. So based on that, uh, on, on my thoughts, I'm in, I'm in agreement with the proposal that was made to reduce the budgets by five, the proposed budgets by $500,000 allocating $250,000 to the town side and $250,000 to the Board of Education side. One point, uh, Jeff, I think the number that we would be reducing it to is $97,460,000. That's the total. I was just looking at oh, the amount to be I raised see. by taxes. I see. I see. But that's I a good see. point. Jonathan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I have to roll back the clock a little. Uh, when I was first elected to the Board of Finance in 2011, I forecasted that the town of Guilford was on a trajectory which would drive the mill rate over 33 by 2017. Uh, my forecast was based on uh, prevailing budget increases at the time, uh, an estimated decrease in real estate of about 20 percent, and some estimates from our finance department for debt servicing costs for the new high school. Uh, I am relieved to say that a couple of factors have prevented us thus far from reaching a mill rate of 33. Uh, over the last six to seven years, spending has trended down slightly, and we have uh, seen favorable interest rates offset our heavier debt. But these positives have not been enough to change the direction of Guilford tax rates. Uh, here we are in 2018 looking at a budget that will require a mill rate in excess of 31 mills. Um, it should definitely be recognized that past and present administrations are applying a greater deal, uh, a greater degree of fiscal restraint. But the measures taken thus far are nowhere near enough to reverse the trend. So my remarks on the budget have a common theme, and that common theme is that we can do better. I still feel that policies and practices that could lead to a greater efficiencies in our government are not being pursued. Year after year, the budget includes requests to expand facilities, add additional staff, increase salaries, purchase new equipment. There's very little effort made to improve efficiency, reduce staff, consolidate facilities, utilize equipment more effectively, and bring public sector wages in line with private sector wages. So here are some broad strokes, some big areas where I feel like the, the town and the, the Board of Education can do better. Uh, I do think we need to rein in public sector wage inflation. Uh, the town and the school need to be vigilant and continue to negotiate contract increases that are more in line with the private sector. I still believe that we can show a lot more restraint in capital spending. Uh, prior to the purchase of the high school, Guilford taxpayers were paying debt servicing burden of about $3.7 million. Over the next couple years, that figure will exceed $10 million. In my prior term on the board, I recommended that the BOS and the BOE show a lot greater restraint in capital spending to prevent debt servicing costs for additional projects, adding fuel to the fire on top of the anticipated cost to finance the high school. Post-purchase of the high school, my recommendation to be vigilant about restraint in capital spending remains the same. Not only to reduce the substantial debt servicing costs our residents are now paying, but also to keep our debt servicing ratios in a range that's conducive to a AAA bond rating. 
While over the long term, I've always felt that the town and school could show a greater degree of restraint in capital spending, it should be noted that this year the BOS has completely refrained from making any request for bonded capital projects this budget cycle. In addition, the BOE has only requested bonded capital to replace HVAC systems for two schools, both of which are long overdue for replacement. Uh, but some restraint in one budget cycle falls short of what's needed to turn the tide. I also feel that the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen has come up short on an opportunity to make Guilford run more cost effectively by implementing recommendations made by the Efficiency Task Force, most prominently to combine departments like finance and IT, instead of maintaining them separately, the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. I've also pointed out that we can use special funds where appropriate to reduce the operating budget. I'd like to revisit the possibility of using some money that's in the land acquisition fund, which I believe has grown to a balance of over a million dollars at this point, to help provide some tax relief for taxpayers and to pay some expenses for land acquisitions we've made in the past. Um, I've made a suggestion recently on this last budget that we pay for uh, the conversion of the Youth and Family Services building to gas out of a energy trust fund that we had available and uh, that came out of one line in the preliminary budget and now it's not going to impact taxpayers and I think we'll probably talk a little bit more tonight about uh, our rainy day fund our unassigned fund uh, this fund is a vital part of the financial profile of our town um, it's uh, critical to have a rainy day fund and to have an emergency fund for um, unforeseen events but this fund is very well funded and over the years it's grown and uh, it's back to a point uh, that I consider to be fully funded and I believe that some of these funds could be used to reduce uh, taxpayers burden. I also feel that the town is not looking at every opportunity to regionalize uh, when they do this it's it's fantastic for taxpayers uh, the school has created an in-house special ed program and they've already attracted um, students from other municipalities and they actually do pay into our system to help offset the cost and this is a benefit that's working well for not only students in our town but students in adjacent towns I do think the town needs to be careful about staffing over time and contracting um, taxpayers would like overtime to be used reasonably and for us to not use uh, contractors when uh, we can use full-time employees. And as uh, Mr. McKenzie's brought up on several meetings and over, over a period of time, we need to invest our town's funds more strategically so that we can earn a greater return for our taxpayers and also ease the tax burden. So in the absence of some of these long-term strategies being pursued vigilantly, it gives me great pause in approving this budget. However, we're in a budget cycle that is uh, exceptional in many ways. Uh, I feel that the town budget is very conservative, and I feel that the school budget is also very conservative. Uh, I'm also very pleased that there is a bipartisan interest in uh, trying to take this budget and, and bring it down and have our Board of Selectmen and our Board of Education so, show some restraint. And I'm supportive of that idea, but I would like to go further. And I have a motion here in front of me that I'd like to propose to provide tax relief to Guilford residents in the amount of $1,571,361. This would be a combination of transferring money from the unassigned fund onto the pension lines for the school and for the town, but then to ask for reduction in expenditures of $850,000. You want to break that down for us? So you got it. Well, you, you can do it in your own words. All right. I'll read this into the record. In order to provide tax relief to Guilford residents in the amount of $1,571,361, I propose the following motion. 
$301,690 to be transferred from the unassigned fund to the BOE Employee Benefits Pension Line with an equivalent reduction in the amount to be raised from taxes. $419,671 to be transferred from the unassigned fund to the Board of Selectmen's Employee Benefits Pension Account 00146-52000 with an equivalent reduction in the amount to be raised from taxes. The total expenditure budget and educational operating budget to be reduced by $850,000 $425,000 from the town operating budget and $425,000 from the educational operating budget with an equivalent reduction in the amount to be raised from taxes. Okay, do you, all, do you have any questions about that proposal that has just been submitted? Anyone? So you were looking at a million five hundred seventeen thousand dollar cut basically that's true Ken um, I I was surprised to hear today that calls had gone around and various people on this board had agreed come to some sort of consensus that $500,000 would be cut, um, and that was the plan, and I'm sure you have the nod to do it. Um, I'm not so sure that's the way it's supposed to take place. Um, for me, as I've indicated many times, it's more about the process. It doesn't really matter whether I want to cut $500,000 or a million dollars or $2 million. Um, at the end of the day, it's up to the voters to come and vote. We're going to put a number to them. You all clearly um, will have the votes so that you're going to pass tonight, tomorrow, whatever, whatever number you want to pass, and then the voters will come back, and maybe they'll accept it, and maybe they won't. For me, um, I don't really see a lot of change, and I think you know, on Tuesday night I mentioned four or five places where I thought we could make meaningful changes and save meaningful amounts of money, not fives and tens, but hundreds of thousands of dollars on each one. Um, they aren't all going to be able to be done in this budget cycle, but I've suggested for two years now anyway, more than that, that the process that we need to try to do things differently. And I would argue that we, this budget cycle is exactly like every other budget cycle we've seen. Um, we have members of the Board of Selectmen who have been quoted in the press as saying that they're not happy about the budget, but there's nothing they can do. I would argue that we're here, if we're not happy about something, to try to make changes um, so that we can have something that's different. Um, we heard Mr. Bloss say the other night that people were moving here from Fairfield. I know that Fairfield, and I forget where the other person had come from, because of what a great deal they're getting here. I would argue that Veronica's point about the town being becoming less affordable or unaffordable for many, um, to me anyway, carries more weight than making this place a great deal, which it is, and we've all mentioned this, it is much less expensive. Is there nothing you can do about that? Um, quality pause while we wow. this There's Let's just call a small, small pause. That's okay now. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's, I think, Technical the difficulties. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's see Thanks. where we are. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we resume? We're good to go? Indeed. Um, okay. The technical interference has passed. <laughs>
So while it may be a bargain for many people, I, I don't know that the goal should be to, um, the town's goal should be to spend money be as, as, you know, as quickly as we can or as readily as we can because um, other people will keep coming here and, and we just have a complete turnover of our population in town. I, I don't think that's fair to many of the people that have been here for a long time. And, and, I, don't, and I don't mean to say that you out there and everybody else listening um, intentionally means to hurt any resident of Guilford, but I would argue that that is what is happening through these continual tax increases that we've seen. With regard to these numbers, um, I did mention that I thought the pension shore up was an obligation that we could have paid for in years past and that we, sh we should use money from the rainy day fund, as Mr. Trotta just mentioned in his um, motion that he made. Um, I, I support that uh, because I do think that we took money and we put it, we taxed people that were here at the time, and, and I won't go through it all again, but we did talk about that the other night. Um, the medical, the stop loss on the medical went from went up by 50% from 868,000 to 1.2 million, um, and we're running very low this year. I would, I think we could probably save three or four hundred thousand dollars by renegotiating our stop loss and increasing the 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 upper band from 150. You know, I don't know what the numbers are, and we we talked about getting that data, but I think that with a little bit of work, we could save some meaningful money on that line. Um, some of the smaller things, like we talked about interest income. I don't even have to, I told you I'd put together a sheet. If you just look at the sheet that you were handed the other day, the total amount of money that we had in July of this year was $44 million. In August it was 43, in September it was 35, in October it was 28, right now it's 38. All I said was take $20 million and buy T-bills for three months and we would have made more than we budgeted for this year, just in that three month period, or just with one $20 million purchase. We had the money, we've had the money a long time. We have one account that in July had 30, it's the account that pays no interest, um, or very, very little interest. It had 30 million in July, it had 36 million in August, it had 26 million in September. So that's three months that you could have easily, you could have put more than 20 million into T-bills. Last year it was the same thing. It was 25 million, 32 million, 25 million, just in that one account. And it happened twice. It was 30 million, 21 million, 19 and a half million. Um, and you would expect it to happen twice every year. So to me, the interest income line has to go up. The $80,000 budget is woefully low. You, you, we, it, I think that should be at least 200. I think with some work, it can get closer to 300. Um, so that to me is a no brainer. But again, but again, it's part of the process. The, I've, I've asked for a long time now, I think there's $40,000 allocated for seed and fertilizer for the Upper Cox field. Um, as I've indicated before, that field is primarily used by a private entity. Somebody's profiting off of that field. I don't think the taxpayer should be subsidizing a private enterprise. So why we spend $40,000, that person has to pay more. The field charges have to go up. Um, do we have to have, I'm not a mower expert, do we have to buy the mower that can, that can cut 21 acres per hour? Um, that's a lot of acres. We, our fields just aren't that big. And in reality, if you stand out in the outfield of any baseball field in town, you never get a ground ball because the grass is so long that the ball stops before it even gets to you. So I, I just don't see the need for that mower. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that one, but that's a big mower. Um, the, um, the pension we've talked about, the interest we've talked about, the medical stop loss, I'm not even going to go into cuts. There are no cuts in this budget. That's up to the public to go for cuts. I, I think there are lots of places where we could make savings without impacting any services in town. Um, we've never really had headcount reduction. I don't think we have to go there now, but if the public comes back and wants cuts, I think we could save meaningful amounts of money through some headcount reduction. Um, we talked about the, tw I talked about the 20 year. I think somebody needs to look into um, I don't understand why we did a 20-year bond on the high school. Um, it's not fair to the people that are here for the first 20 years of the school. The school's got a 40-year life. That should have been a 30-year bond at least. Um, so you spread it out. Yes, ultimately it costs more money, but you're spreading it out among the people that are using the facility. Uh, the tech lease at the high school, 
again, I, we, we talked about that. I did see, by the way, if uh, Linda's here, I did find the 10-year um, sheet. You did hand that out last year. I found an old copy of that, so you don't, I don't need that again. Um, that talks about where the monies go, but initially that, to me, it's always been a, a Chromebook, and this year, as I said the other night, 200, and it's either 270 or 230 is for staff laptops. Again, if, if the budget is really tight and you have to find money, to me, that's something that can, that can probably wait a year. Um, I think there are a lot of places where, and I don't think it's going to negatively impact, I'm sorry, uh, impact the, the kids' as education. I'm not anti-education. I, I, I heard all these people come forward wanting the extra teachers over at Calvin Leet. I fully support that. Let's bear in mind, the school budget is $60 million. One teacher, a new teacher, is roughly $60,000 fully loaded. That's one-tenth of one percent of the education budget. So when I talk about saying that we can make cuts to the education budget, I'm not suggesting that we eliminate that one-tenth of one percent of the teacher's budget. There are plenty of other places where one can look. As we all know, though, none of us in this room, other than those that are on the Board of Ed, have the ability or the authority to determine where the Board of Education allocates its money. So there's nothing, it's, it's, they, can, they can tell you that they will cut that incremental teacher, and maybe they will. I think that would be a poor decision, and I would be very, very disappointed if they did. But when I suggest, and frankly when anybody suggests, that the Board of Ed could do more with less, it doesn't necessarily mean that those people are calling for cuts in in teachers or in specific teachers. It's up to the people in positions that have the power to make those cuts to determine where those changes take place. Um, I talked about the golf course that historically has lost thirty to fifty thousand dollars. It's now budgeted to lose a hundred thousand dollars. I don't agree with that. The waste transfer station, I don't know where it stands, but historically it's lost money. That shouldn't lose money. That should be priced. It's easy to do. Just price it so that it breaks even. It doesn't have to make money, but there's no reason for that thing to lose money. Just price it accordingly. Um, retirement was put back in. I think that's a good thing. I think, I think it's still a little low on the, um, on the Board of Ed side. I think it's, it's either 100 or 100, I think 100,000 they put back in. Um, they weren't going to plan for any uh, retirement savings. I think they put in a hundred. It may be a little low. I think you'd probably get a little bit more than that, is my guess. But again, there's that's, you know, we we had a, a lot more retirements than we expected last year. It's not that. You probably get a little bit more out of retirements. Um, that's pretty much. It. I could go on. There, there, there. I just haven't seen a change. So the, the short answer is, I'm not supporting this budget. Um, so I'm going to vote no. I know the budget's going to pass. I think that's that's fine. It's really up to the people to come forward and vote however they they please. And if they if they vote for it, then great. And if they vote against it, then here are some of the areas where I think we might be able to save some money. Thank you. Would you care to put a proposal before the board? To, uh, no, you would not. No, it's not. No. Uh, well, you know, it's an open board, and, uh, you know, speaking for everyone on the board, I hope, uh, this is an open situation where if you were available to talk with us, we would talk with you. Everyone else seems to talk with each other. You're not supposed to hold meetings talking about Not meetings, them. not meetings, just discussions. Sense of the board, of where it's at. A lot, so not to be, I mean, no disrespect for this, but... Almost, not almost, everything I have just said, I've said at Board of Finance meetings. I've, in fact, the interest I've talked about since last August, it took eight months, six months to get this sheet of paper and, and was disappointed to see the results that were on that, where we have our money. Uh, every single one of these topics are items that I have brought up in Board of Finance meetings, in most cases more than once, and I don't see any of them being addressed. And so I personally have a problem with that. Well, you do have, uh, we did receive from the finance director a, uh, at least a proposal of the considerations in the investment channel. And I believe that's going to be part of our agenda on Monday. But mm -hmm. this is very recent. And I, I commend you for bringing this to our attention. 
and I think others on the boards have raised this before, and now we're going to evaluate an approach and at least weigh in on it. Um, but I take, I accept your position. So, but so the reason I don't put a, I don't want to put anything forward, as I said before, it's, it's up to the public. So if you think 500 is the right number, you, I'm sure the four of you will vote to do that. And if the public wants that, then, then that will be what it will be. And if they come back, then we can look into some of these other areas and, and maybe try to get some more out of it. But I don't, I don't think it's incumbent on me to say I want a million or two million or a million five or three million because it's not my decision to make. No, I agree with that. I, I'm simply suggesting that communication is a two-way street. I would argue that I've been communicating quite clearly for a long time. So. <laughs> Okay. We have not heard from the junior <laughs> member of our board. He's a member of our board. Um, so I'm going to, I guess I'm going to talk from being the newest member of the board, a little bit different perspective, I think, than um, some of my colleagues who I have really enjoyed collaborating with. I just wanted to thank the Board of Ed, the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Finance. Um, I think we've all collaborated and communicated very well together. Um, I think the department heads uh, should get a shout out too. They did really try to keep the cost down in their budgets this year. Um, and overall, I think the budgets, this is my first budget cycle, I think the budgets were, were fair. I think they fit with the mission um, of trying to meet the needs of the most, of all of the residents. Um, certainly we're not gonna be able to meet every single need of every single person in Guilford, but to do right by the most amount of people in the town I think is really important and to do it to the best of our ability. We certainly have a quality of life here in this town um, that, we, that we aspire to and I think that these budgets reflect that. However, I think with uh, the state cuts, I think with some of the economic uncertainty in the town, certainly some of the residents that have been here for a long time feeling like they are getting um, tax increase after tax increase. Uh, I think that it does make sense to, to and I would support the $500,000 cut. But to Ken's point, I guess I see um, a lot of areas of common ground going forward on the board. Um, so I know, Ken, you talked about the investments. I think that's actually a very smart thing to look at going forward and to look at how we do invest our dollars. Um, I think that there's an area of opportunity to look at the efficiencies of the departments like uh, Jonathan had mentioned. And I think, um, you know, we've talked about some of those one-time payments. I think those, that does make sense and to either use the insurance uh, surplus or um, I guess I would favor the insurance surplus over the, the unassigned fund balance to, to use to those. So I see this as an opportunity to move forward and collaborate on some of these bigger issues. I understand I'm new, so these might have been issues in the, in the past, but I do think that we're at a point in these budgets um, and in, the, in just the, the health and the wealth of the town where we can look at some of these going forward. Um, so I know that they are not gonna be topics that we talk about or that we're voting on tonight, but I do think that we need to look at them going forward. Okay. Anyone else would like to weigh in? Uh, go ahead, Ken. I meant to point out also both Mr. Trotta and Megan Forgio and Megan Scanlon yeah. <laughs> uh, talked about regionalization. In you can address me any way you like. Scanlon in, is, we're, we're officially Scanlon. The okay. paperwork is in to Social Security, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's official. In, in looking back through old minutes and hearings that I, I don't, I couldn't find it to bring to this meeting, but I believe it was either Senator Meyer or Chairman Bloss, I think the year was 2010, um, talked about the struggles that the state was having and the state budget being, the deficit being, I want to say three and a half billion dollars at the time, um, and said that this board and this town really needed to focus and look to try to regionalize as many, just look for any opportunities to regionalize. And um, perhaps we've done that, but I don't think we've actually, um, 
I think there's probably more we can do. And, and as, as I said, these two both brought it up, and I think it's an important, you know, I think we're in a similar situation with a, and we're talking about much larger dollars now, so I think it's something that people need to focus on. This uh, would be a good time for uh, me to read a statement prepared by our chairman, Mike Ailes, who, uh, as you know, is out of town on family business. And he did ask me to read this after the everybody had weighed in on the budget, so it's my pleasure to do so. <coughs> Think of me as Mike Ailes without a beard, okay? But uh, good evening. As stated at our first workshop Thursday night, though I wish I could be there to provide these comments in person, I made a plan several months ago to spend time with my children this week as two of them having spring break in Texas. Uh, I figured the chances of requiring two workshops were slim, and only one workshop would be needed to move a budget forward to the voters. I had not figured on a nor'easter wreaking havoc on our community. Little does he know we're waiting for another one. Yeah. With the second workshop held to allow for public comment and for those who wish to attend. Prior to my comments on this year's budget, I should have edited this out. I'd like to thank Ken Gammon for taking the reins for the second Board of Finance budget workshop. I'll give you the permission to delete that. I would also like to thank my colleagues on the board for their numerous hours of time attending budget-related meetings and workshops, pouring through the figures presented since early January and stated, stating their honest thoughts and opinions, not just tonight, as I'm sure everyone did, he's right, but last week and in the workshops and joint meetings previously held. Every year, certain themes or issues arise when budget season arrives. We see issues revolving around debt service and the new high school's impact, reduced state revenue, implementing full-day kindergarten, contract negotiations, ramping up in-house special ed, fluctuating pension and insurance contributions, and the list can go on. This year is different. The theme this year seems to be perception versus reality versus balance. Some of the past issues I just mentioned still affect this budget, but not to the levels we've seen in the past. We heard from the Board of Education that with the exception of a few small new investments in their budget, most notably two elementary school music positions, heavily supported by at their public forums, contractual agreements are offset by savings in other areas, resulting in a 1.87 operating increase. This is the third consecutive year the education budget will be under 2%. The Board of Selectmen had more challenges offsetting previous town contractual agreements, which includes the initial implementation of career fire personnel in North Guilford and maintaining our current level of operating capital. Coming in at a 3.69% increase, it could have easily been 2.34% as, as approximately one half a percent is made up of the new fire personnel and another three quarters of a percent is invested in a public works truck replacing one over 30 years old. And the recent weather events we experienced should be proof that we cannot kick either of these expenses further down the road. With a combined town and education operating budget of 2.26%, it's hard to argue these budgets weren't, cra weren't crafted and reduced to a level acceptable by our board and taxpayers. By adding the already authorized debt service increase of almost 8%, the expenditure budget moves to 2.91%, a number which I believe is the one that matters and should be focused on simply because it answers the question, how are our town leaders controlling expenses? 2.91% is the new quotes reality, end quotes. The perception issue comes in when there is some further reduction of state revenue. The grand list drops 3.72% and there is revaluation. How the final mill rate affects a property owner may swing widely based on how the revaluation compares to the final grand list change. In fact, the mill rate change of 7% could still mean no tax increase if a property is revalued 7% below their 2013 assessment. It's all comparative and where perception, generalizations, assumptions, and rumors come into play. 
Where I struggled this year is, is addressing the, quotes balance, end quotes, of this 2.91% reality, the grand list revaluation perception, and what amount is equitable to move forward to referendum on April 10. I know the budget is fair, but will it be considered equitable and have support from the majority of voters? Last Tuesday night during public forum, we heard from one person supporting the school budget as is, one person frustrated that the funding of anywhere from 500,000 to 800,000 was not added in the education budget for later high school start times, and one person stating that no tax increase should be the only option. That same individual directed our board to scrutinize every line item and make cuts. And in response to that individual, we do that every year. So where does this budget end up? Based on joint Board of Finance and Education meetings, Board of Selectmen workshops, two budget presentations by the Board of Education and First Selectmen, public forum comments, singular conversations I've had with members of this and the other two boards, and the discussions at our workshop Thursday night, which covered health, healthy, unassigned, and medical fund balances, consistency with capital operating and bonded expenditures, and our recent prudent fiscal management, I would recommend no more than a $500,000 cut split 50-50 between the town and BOA, BOE. This would reduce the total budget expenditure increase with debt service to 2.39%, 1.7% contained in the operating budgets only. To be clear, this cut is in light of the reality that two reasonable operating budgets were received from the Board of Selectmen and Education, and the debt service increase trended down from recent years when increases were 35 to 50%. However, this cut is also based on looking at the perception of a community that expects the same level of services and programs at a level more reflective of what their budgets are. Call it, quotes, inflation, end quotes, or quotes, cost of living, end quotes. But despite challenges, whenever there is a budget cut, I believe this is the maximum cut that can be sustained by our town to one, maintain and improve the hundreds of services and programs expected by Guilford residents and businesses, and two, be considered an equitable value the majority of Guilford voters can agree to. While I'm not present to vote, I hope my thoughts and position have been clear, helpful, and in line with this board's deliberations and eventual final approved budget to be moved to annual meeting on April 3rd and the subsequent April 10th budget referendum. I look forward to hearing the board's final decision. And again, thank you for accepting my absence at this critical meeting that affects the Guilford community's future. That is the text of the letter, and I will give it to uh, Tracy to put in, attached to the minutes. The, uh, we understand that by, uh, by uh, town charter and other policies, uh, this position cannot be recorded as a vote, but that is his opinion. He is our chairman. Part of the part of the deliberation, if you don't mind. Um, are there any other questions or comments that we would like to have before we go to public? I think forward? I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. Well, I think that the motion that I proposed and the uh, proposal that you have made are, are fairly fairly close, fairly similar. Although your proposal does not include any kind of transfer of any kind of surplus. Right. Is it possible that perhaps we can meld these proposals together? And you would like to see, if I, if I know it's correct, you'd like to see uh, $300,000 roughly moved from unassigned fund balance, is that correct? It's actually um, approximately $300 for the Board of Education's pension contribution and approximately 420000 for the okay. town's uh, pension contribution and a reduction in expenditures by 850000 but perhaps we could find some middle ground mm -hmm. if you're looking for a $500,000 reduction in expenditures. Comments? For the Board of Education pension? So, 
the first amount? I feel like this is kind of a winning combination as far as having money on the sidelines that I feel could be put to work for the taxpayer to give them some tax relief. I also feel that a contribution to the pension account is actually going to shore up our pension. It's going to benefit our town workers. And then I also believe that out of the various options, the current return on the pension is probably kind of a secondary effect of investing this money where we're going to earn the highest return for that particular investment. So that's why I chose to transfer money to the pension line. I know we've talked about considering moving money from these funds that we feel are on the so sidelines. I'm not clear. Where, where are you looking to transfer money from into the Board of Edu in the Board of Ed's pension and the Board of Selectmen's pension fund? Where are you, where, where are you looking to take fund. it from? The unassigned fund balance? No, I want to take it from health insurance. And, and then, and you're also looking at, uh, we proposed 500000 you're proposing $850,000 in expense Expenditure Correct. cuts? I have a problem with that. Is there some middle ground? Would you do a one time? Well, my concern is I don't know if we can direct where the Board of Education uses those funds. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think we can designate where the funds that go to the Board of Ed get get used. I may be corrected by our finance director, but I believe in the case of a transfer, we can designate a transfer. That's always been my understanding. I would, I would not be in favor of transferring without hearing from our first selectmen and, and the board of selectmen without their, you know, input. I, I, I think that that's. Should we recognize our first selectmen? Uh, um, I'm sorry. As an institutional member, I believe what you are attempting to do is to provide a secondary funding source, an income line item that would offset that expenditure. That expenditure will remain in the budget, uh, and you are looking to supplement the income uh, that we had identified, which you clearly have the right to do. So you would be suggesting that uh, we uh, identify $761,000 of unassigned fund balance to be used as revenue for the 2018-2019 budget. I will now give you my editorial opinion. Uh, I think it is a fool's errand. We've discussed the fact that uh, next year at this time, you will be looking for another $761,000 to try to fill the hole because it won't be there next year. And, and we have done that for years past. We and we've done, we have not done, done it in the last, but we've changed the policy to not rely on that. It is in effect a one-time source to offset operating One for how many years it has taken us to bring the fund balance to where it is and to have a cushion that we can use in times of genuine crisis. I, I think we've had discussions in terms of using the fund balance for a variety of things. Well, this board, and I think I speak for the entire board of selectmen, uh, is not in favor of using it to offset budgetary increases. Well, I agree with that analysis, and I do agree that next year that funding source won't be there. I feel that the unassigned fund balance is fully funded, and that we're definitely at a tipping point where we're really overtaxing our taxpayers when we retain that much money on the sidelines. Okay. Any further comments on that? Well, we are at a point where we can entertain a motion. Well, I think we have a motion on the table. We have this Mr. motion Chairman. on the table. Could you rephrase it so that we get it accurately? I don't think it's been seconded. Well, he, he has the right to propose. Yeah, he, right, he does. I'm just saying he made the motion, but, but, I, don't, but I don't believe it was seconded. seconded. Well, I think as a member of the board, I... Why don't we, why don't we hold off, if, if at your pleasure, Mr. Chairman, and just perhaps talk about some kind of middle ground for expenditures? Any thoughts on that? I feel the 500000 is a legitimate uh, cut. I would be very uncomfortable about moving into these other areas. And I'd like to, I can issue the, propo the proposition for our discussion myself, if you'd like. How like about the, uh, what's that? What about raising the revenue on interest income? I think that's something that we can't consider right now. Why? Because 
I'd like, a, I'd like us to have the benefit of consideration of what happens to the whole investment portfolio, which we're first going to be considering next Monday. We're talking about liquid cash securities that have been earning 30 basis points. We're budgeting for 30 basis points. T-bills pay 165. This is a no-brainer. You pick up the phone, you make one call, you make $150,000, and you don't have to do anything else. If you do a modicum of work, you can make 250 or 300. Here's the history. This, this is this is a no-brainer. This is ridiculous. I don't think you need to change the budget to do that. I think if, if, if I think interest income should stand, and I think if what you're suggesting and we discuss it on Monday nights. Uh, meeting is is something that's reasonable and something that the finance director and uh, the board of selectmen is is uh, interested in doing. It becomes it, it's extra money. We can go ahead, still move it forward. That's what we're trying to not do. I would like to see us once, just once, put a budget out there that we actually have to work to get to. We've been overtaxing people for years. Oh, I, I don't. So agree this with is that. just simple surplus flow. Is all it is. It's ridiculous. I think that can be considered by the, as part of the investment analysis, which we are supposed to be doing every month. And we, we're going to have a proposal. We have a proposal for Mary Jane that I hope will be a substantial uh, agenda item. And I don't think uh, we're at the point where we have to leap into that right now without adequate uh, backup and information. Uh, Matt? Mr. Chairman, uh, if the board so pleases, you can make a decision tonight to increase the interest income line. Uh, to a number that you feel comfortable with. Uh, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable with much more than 150000 total. Um, but if Mr. McKenzie's uh, assessment and analysis is, is correct, uh, I, I would assume $150,000 would be a reasonable number to go to from the current number of $80,000. If it turns out not to be the case, uh, then we will eventually have to go perhaps the fund balance to, uh, to, to make up that difference in income uh, if it doesn't materialize. I would like to keep the proposal as we're planning it at 500. Now, Mr. Chairman, I would point out that if we just were to meet halfway between 850,000 and 500, that would be 625,000. You've just gotten another $70,000 of revenue would even cover that difference on the town side if we get that. I mean, if we get it. 675 Certainly. is halfway. Yeah. 675. Just as a point of clarification, the additional $70,000 in interest income does not affect your projected $500,000 cover. That remains the same. You were just using the other side of the balance sheet to offset uh, some of those costs. So you, so you would then, you would, you would theoretically approve the spending uh, allocation minus the $500,000, and you would modify the estimate of revenues by an additional $70,000. Okay. You could probably be best to do that. You could do it in one motion or you could do it in two motions. Are you comfortable with that, board members? My concern is I, I want... And I have no reason to disagree with what Ken's uh, pr proposed, but I'd like to do some more analysis in terms of what we can invest in, how we can invest in it, what the limits are in terms of what we, when we can invest, what the what the cash flow cycle is in terms of town expenses and when they need the money. So I just might, and it may turn out that you're exactly right that we can do what you've proposed, yeah. but I'd like to learn more about it so that I'm not voting on something that I'm really not 100% clear on right now. That, that's that's my take. This is too sudden. I, w I would like to put that off. There's there are some interim adjustments that we can make if we decide to move on this on Monday's meeting. It would certainly benefit the town. I don't know why that would affect us right now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is another option the board has in front of them. That is, uh, assuming the uh, budget passes, when you go to set your mill rate, uh, you uh, might be able to offset the. Uh, some of the, uh, the mill rate increase by uh, re-examining your uh, revenue estimates at that particular point 
uh, and thereby, thereby accomplish what uh, Mr. McKenzie is looking to do if you are uncomfortable with doing it uh, here this evening. So you would do it at the time you set to know it. But again, uh, which would give us more time to really. I guess you have to use the opportunity to do that and, in fact, uh, impact the mill rate uh, at the appropriate time. Comments? I would feel comfortable doing that. I am not comfortable with changing it tonight. I, I agree with John, uh, Jeff. Uh, I'd like time to, to analyze it. That sheet that you had, I, I, it, that was not shared with me, so I would like a copy Movie. of that. I never got it. Mary Jane handed it out to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she handed it out to all of us at the meeting last week. It's not a big. It's not a big number. It, it's not a big number, and yeah. it, the voters aren't voting on this. So you're right. We have the get, We have the gap between when the mill rate is set and when the referendum is approved that we can change the revenue assumptions and adjust the mill rate. So that we we can certainly do that. Okay. I'm not in favor of it, of um, taking transfers out of the undesignated fund balance at this time. Either. Nor am I. Uh, well, there is no motion on the floor right at the moment, so I'll submit one for purposes of discussion. I'd like to submit uh, that we uh, submit to the voters for their approval a budget in the amount of uh, $97,460,807 an estimated tax increase of 2.39 percent, spending uh, reducing 200 and a total of $500,000 from the submitted budgets of the two boards, uh, which were originally $97,960,870, reducing that by $500,000 in equal increments of $250,000 from the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. Second. So just so I have the numbers right, it'd be $97,160,807. Am I looking for wrong numbers? I just, I, I just. $97,460,807 for 2.39% increase. That's the number I gave you. No. Okay. We have a second on that. Yes. Discussion? So what I'd ask if we could go further for taxpayers and provide them even more relief. Perhaps we'd love to thousand dollar reduction. We'd love to. But I don't believe we can at this juncture. But I think uh, this exercise is making us ever more mindful of our ongoing detailed responsibility to scrutinize these uh, financial statements as they come to us each month, which some of us try to do, I think all of us try to do. And uh, this is not uh, a closed issue, it's an open issue for a new fiscal year, and one that I, I hope would see us as an activist board working on behalf of uh, the town's best interests. But I believe this, uh, if we go back to the need to respect the taxpayers' needs and limitations for this coming year, I believe this is the most prudent way of doing so. So I think we're down now. I know you're trying to negotiate something here, Jonathan, but I think we're down to a vote, unless there's some <coughs> other comment from anyone. I just don't feel that these decreases are going far enough to really change the trajectory that we're on. I understand. Anyone here? Like I would just comment an additional $175,000 cuts hurts the Board of Education and hamstrings the town of Guilford to, to, and the quality of life and the services that we provide. I, I, I hope in the coming fiscal year we, we have these meaningful discussions mm -hmm. that you were all talking about. Uh, I absolutely think they're necessary. We've talked about them far too long, um, and I'm open to it, but it, it doesn't it doesn't help us tonight with this budget. And I think another 175,000. Just pinches. No, it does more than that. It really does. 
I, 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 can't, I can't see it, so I, I would not be in favor of that. I would just question, you know, why is 500000 palatable as opposed to 600000 As I said in the beginning, I don't think $500,000 is palatable. But I think a 2.91% increase is, is unaffordable. You know, it's not in keeping with the cost of living. By getting it to 239, at least it's in line with the cost of, uh, cost of living. Not that I think that that's great, but anything lower than that, it, it, you know, we still have to provide services. We still have, you heard the folks from North Guilford, you know, we have to roll ambulances up there. We have to man the fire department. You know, you heard the teachers come out for the, the, wanting music for their children in the elementary school. All these things are important. And, it, and, and what's the point of having missions, you know, and, 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 you know, everybody needs a goal and a mission, and we have those, and we have the means to, to meet them if we're going to sit here and, and cut their legs out from under them. I, I, I think that's what we're doing. No, there is some interest in, in trying to show some restraint, even if it requires hard decisions. But I do, you know, I do recall, uh, you know, recently in recent history that we sent a budget to the voters and, and we did make a rather small decrease in the budget, and, and, the, and the budget was sent back to us by the voters because it wasn't substantial enough. I don't think this is a minor in, minor increase. I think taking five hundred thousand out of these budgets. Are, it's a substantial cut for both boards. And uh, I, I know we can depend on their good faith to uh, not to cut into services and goods that are vital to the taxpayer. I mean, not that everything that they have in there is not, but that they prioritize these. And even though we have the authority to recommend certain cuts for the Board of Selectmen, uh, I don't think anybody on this board is eager to do so. And with Board of Education, our, our role is limited to suggesting or authorizing a number. And we have a new administration. I mean, we have a new Board of Selectmen. They, they you know, they have to have the opportunity to, to get their feet wet and decide on what their priorities are and their agendas and where, where we're, we're going. Correct. The other concern I have is that if we were to reduce it by another $175,000, the uh, on both sides, the, the Board of Selectmen's budget is already reducing the capital line item by approximately $50,000. My expectation would be that they would make additional cuts in capital uh, purchases, which is kind of how we got to the point where we started to bond for more things over time. And I, I, I I think that the program over the last eight years of increasing the capital uh, line in the budget to pay for things as we go is, is a wise, uh, was a wise decision, and I'd, I'd like to see us continue on that trajectory. And so by reducing it by $50,000 this year, we've gone off course slightly, understandably given the other uh, items in the budget, but I think if we reduce it by another 175, it's likely that that's going to be the area that gets targeted for um, reduction, and I think down the long in the long run, it's going to end up costing the town more money. Any other comments? Someone care to move the question? Call the question. Okay. Uh, we have the question before us, and uh, we're voting now to reduce the budgets to a total of ninety-seven million four hundred sixty thousand eight hundred and seven dollars. Uh, a reduction of $500,000 to be shared equally from the submitted budgets of the Board of Education and Board of Selectmen to the amount of 250 each. And uh, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Oh. Thank I'd like you. to see the measure go further, but I'm glad to have reductions. Okay, pretty good. Uh, those opposed? Uh, let the record show that this is carried by a vote of five to one, and a, uh, it carries with it the support of the chairman of the Board of Finance, Mr. Ailes, and it will be recorded in this, but not cannot be recorded in our vote. And with that, I open this uh, meeting up to public forum. Anyone care to address the board? Chairman, you want to move on the bonding questions? 
Uh, thank you. Uh, it's right here. Uh, we have the forest bonding uh, projects from the uh, Board of Education, uh, and it breaks out this way. The total bond is three million six hundred ninety thousand two hundred and seventy dollars. Uh, nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars. Excuse me. Three million six hundred ninety thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars. This breaks into three questions. Uh, the HVAC upgrades at Baldwin Middle School for a total estimated, uh, rather carefully, I'm assuming, of two million seventy-eight thousand three hundred and fourteen dollars, uh, and that's for HVAC upgrades at Baldwin. For Melissa Jones School, HVAC upgrades uh, in the amount of $1,402,427. And the third item, A&E future projects with a base of $210,186. Now, I'd like to move this for approval, uh, but I need, a, I need a little advice on this. Uh, we do not have the documentation in front of us, but we can vote on this as a sense of the board. Mary Jane? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd just like to address the board to say that um, the decision has been made that this will all be listed as one question. One question. Considering um, the size of the uh, authorization and the similarity of the projects. Uh, so it'll be one um, project. We did have our financial advisors review the numbers from the Board of Education and we've made a slight adjustment to the cost of issuance. The total bond uh, authorization that will be presented to you is $3,650,000. We've saved money already. <laughs> the, board, the Board of Education very nicely uh, makes a, uh, an estimate of what the bonding costs would be. Once we have the final numbers, um, our uh, advisors are able to give us more finite numbers. That's the reason for the reduction. Okay, so the amount that they're receiving for the cost of the project, only the bonding costs. And we should, we should uh, mention that the town is submitting nothing for bonding at this cycle. Okay. Uh, the issue before us is to approve the amount of $3,650,000 for the uh, HVAC upgrades as outlined before for Baldwin and Melissa Jones. Uh, do we have a second? I'll put that in, in, um, in as a motion, but do we have a second? Second. For that? second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All overdue. All, all overdue. Uh, Johnson, did I see your hand up or not? No, sir. I did not. Those opposed? One opposed. Let the record show. Five, four, one opposed. And uh, uh, I think it's fair to say the spirit of one more, four. Okay. Uh, we've concluded most of the business here except for public forum. Is there anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Yes, sir. Would you come up and let's hope the mic doesn't attack you. Which mic? That looks good. So the first thing I find interesting is the public forum is after you voted, which leaves the public the only way to deal with this is to vote it down when it comes up for vote. I think the public forum maybe should have been before. That being said, a couple of questions. I liked Jonathan's proposal. I don't know why we're so ardently against taking some of the funds from the rainy day fund, which seems to grow every year, to offset whether it's the teacher's pension this year. We'll deal with it next year, but every year this fund grows, which means we must be either taxing the people too much or People are not spending all of their budget, so we're ending up with more. My other question is, in the uh, Selectman's special meeting a few weeks ago, I heard somebody say, I think it was Mary Jane, the um, Parks and Rec has taken $10,000 out of their budget. They're not going to fund, the budget's not going to fund fireworks. But we're still going to have fireworks because they have program money. Then last Thursday I heard Board of Ed has been funding from their money that comes in from gate money. They've been funding the busing, but now they want the budget to take care of it. 
why isn't this money come in like any other revenue or tax money, however money comes in, so that it's looked at by the Board of Selectmen, by you people? Why do these groups get these chunks of change? Now, it might only be $30,000 here or 60000 here, but that would have been the number that Jonathan was looking for on top of us getting more from our investments. So these are some of my questions that I hope you guys will look at. And again, I still don't understand why we can't use this rainy day fund that's now fully funded. So yes, it was small a long time ago, but it keeps growing. Something should be looked at. And I don't think, Matt, that it should be used for a new project like the sidewalks. Let's use it for the taxpayers who've already paid it in. Let's not take it and say, hey, we can use it for this, so we'll take on a new debt and use it, and that looks good. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Could you give us your name? I I'm sorry. You that first. Chris Anderhagen, 200 Landon's Way. Anyone else wishing to address the board? Yes, ma'am. Susan Anderhagen, 200 Landon's Way. We seem to be two thirds or two half of the public that's here. Half I, of I the just, unassigned public. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that I had the privilege of being at a leadership meeting once where Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, spoke, and he talked about how he's disturbed by any meeting of a group in his company where there's not conflict, and that we should welcome conflict at a board meeting when when there's discussion. So I'm a little bit disturbed by some of the tone here when Ken brought up some dissenting opinions. It kind of got a little like, I, I seem like he was rejected. So I just want to say that I think that we really need as boards in this town to welcome dissenting opinions. And personally, again, I was disturbed by the fact that the public forum was after the vote because I would have supported Jonathan's motion. <clears throat> Any other people wanting to address the board? Uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This meeting is adjourned.